As a result of normal operation, eventually you may experience reduced in or outflow with your Jabsco 37010 electric flush pump system, or perhaps some leakage from underneath the pump assembly. In most cases, implementing the pump service kit, which is part number 37040-0000, will solve these problems, and in this video we'll show you how to do so. But before we do, some information about safety, tools, and materials. First and foremost, you must make certain the pump is disconnected from power while performing any service. Secondly, because you are working with a human waste system, be sure to use a fresh pair of nitrile gloves, as well as eye protection, and have some rags on hand. You'll need the following tools, documentation, and materials on hand. Regular size flathead and Phillips head screwdrivers. A small flathead screwdriver. 7 16 nut driver and socket wrench. 332nd Allen wrench, and needle nose pliers. It's also a good idea to have the toilet's pump user guide on hand, which comes in the product box, or you can download it, as well as the service kit instructions, which are in the service kit. Finally, have some liquid soap standing by to help install some of the rubber seals into their plastic seats, as well as some silicone grease. For this video, we've removed the bowl and brought the toilet to a workbench, and while you can do this work within the head with the bowl attached, we don't recommend it. If you do perform these tasks without removing the toilet from the boat, you may have to at least remove the mounting bolts and move the whole toilet away from the bulkhead at least two inches so you can remove the motor assembly as part of this process. The service kit contains a number of parts, including the rubber flexible impeller, gasket, O-ring, wear plate, a joker valve, a white bowl to base gasket for the old style toilet, black O-ring seal for newer style toilets, a few small seals, star shaped seal retainer, and lubricant for the impeller. Start by removing all connected hoses, then remove the four screws and lock washers that secure the pump assembly to the base. Then remove the thin wear plate O-ring. Secure the back end of the shaft with a screwdriver while using the nut driver to remove the chopper lock nut. Then, remove the chopper and macerator housing, exposing the centrifugal impeller. Loosen but do not remove the centrifugal impeller's set screw with the Allen wrench and remove the impeller. At this point, turn the assembly over and note the notch on the bottom of the body. During the course of normal operation, the sealing sleeve or shaft seal can fail, and this notch allows any fluid to escape before it can leak into and damage the motor. Continuing with the service, remove the four wear plate screws, noting, for reassembly, that the upper and lower screws are longer. Remove the sealing sleeve, wear plate, and body. Then, remove the flexible impeller from the body and the gasket. Note that the slinger on the shaft and closest to the motor stays in place. Turn the body over and, using the small flathead screwdriver, pry out the star-shaped seal retainer. Then, turn it back over, push out the seal, and remove any debris from the seal seat. The service kit comes with two virtually identical small seals. One has a D-shaped hub and the other has a round hub. Install the seal with the round hub, pushing it in by hand, with the flat side facing the motor. Use some of the liquid soap to help get it fully installed and seated. Next, install the replacement seal retainer, carefully using the flathead screwdriver as needed to make sure each tab is secured under the small lip of the seal seat. When doing so, you'll feel and hear the tabs as they snap under the lip. Slide the body back onto the shaft with the flow indicator on top. Apply some of the impeller lubricant on it as shown, 
which will not only help you get it fully installed, it will also reduce friction when the motor first starts up. Then align the D-shaped hub of the impeller with the shaft and slide it on, bending the blade slightly to help it push in. Hold the replacement gasket in place while putting the wear plate onto it with its flat side against the gasket. Align them with the assembly, then insert one of the long screws into the upper hole until you see it pass beneath the notch in the body and begin to tighten. Do the same with the lower screw, then the side screws, firmly tightening them all down in a diametric pattern. Put a small amount of lubricant under the shaft, then, with the larger diameter side facing the wear plate, align the hub of the replacement sealing sleeve with the shaft. Install the sealing sleeve all the way onto the shaft. Next, install the centrifugal impeller. Align the hub with the shaft and, to assure that the sealing sleeve doesn't leak, firmly hold the impeller against the sleeve as you tighten the set screw. Hold the macerator housing in place, then with the hub tab facing inward, align the chopper hub with the shaft and put it onto the shaft. Start the chopper nut by hand, then, while once again holding the rear of the shaft steady with a screwdriver, use the nut driver and socket wrench to firmly secure the chopper to the assembly. Once completely tight, use the driver to rotate the shaft a few times to make sure nothing's locked up. Install the wear plate O-ring. To help keep it in its groove, first apply some silicone grease to it. Align the housing with the assembly, with the center tab in the 12 o'clock position. Then slide the whole assembly into the base. Support the motor so everything stays in position. Then reinstall the four screws and lock washers and, again, tighten them down in a diametric pattern. Next, remove the discharge port. Remove the joker valve from the port and install the replacement, pushing it all the way in until the flange is fully seated. Then align the discharge port mounting holes. They'll only line up in one position and reinstall the port. When the job is complete, be sure to clean and sanitize your hands, tools, and work surfaces.